Hi guys, this is Karthik from Karthik Simplified and Dr. Nora. We have a very special guest with us, but before I go on and introduce her, who's already mentioned on the description, let's probably figure out what are the key takeaways you can take away from this video. If you are a reverse migrant, if you are applying to CU School of Dental Medicine, or if you are one of those young applicants thinking whether it, is it too early in the process to apply, then this is the video that you should be watching among the billion videos out there. Having said that, I'll pass it over to Noura to introduce our guest and we can move further. All right, so uh, hi guys. Today we have uh, Dr. Leela. Leela is my friend and my first roommate in the US. <laughs> <laughs> we both went to the bench courses Stevenson together. Um, she is right now in the ISP1 at CU School of Dental Medicine. She's a fresh grad, just like me, and a lot of guys outside, just like you guys. So um, let's proceed and ask Leela where she's from. Okay, well, um, hi guys, and hey, Nora and Karthik. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction, and um, thank you for letting me uh, you know, share my experience and hopefully help more people like me. Yep, um, so a little about me. Um, my name is Leela, and I actually grew up in the United States. Uh, my family moved to the US uh, when I was in third grade. And, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've grown up here and I did my schooling here all the way up until high school. And that's when I decided to go back to India to pursue my education in dentistry. Um, I think one of the main reasons why I chose to do that was because I really wanted to get back in touch with my roots and, you know, have more exposure to the Indian culture, which I had at home. But, um, and yeah, so it was a really great experience. Um, and uh, I had a great opportunity to, you know, meet my relatives and, you know, make closer bonds with them. And um, I'm still like really close to them now too. So, yeah, I think that's one thing which I, I got from, you know, going to school in India. And um, another thing is that, uh, you know, the, the type of patients which I saw in India was so diverse. And you know, there are people from, you know, so many different like socioeconomic backgrounds. So that's another thing which um, I really value. And um, yeah, so I, it was a really great experience and I would do it all over again if I had the chance to, so. That's awesome. Uh, I think before we start poking holes on uh, uh -huh. this reverse migration, I, I guess one thing that you did very differently, which no other dentist so far who we met has done is speak about your personal experience and not your professional background. Uh, uh -huh. That's, I think that's probably a, 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 something that our applicants should, you know, try to m match up to. Uh, because everybody pretty much begins with their, hey, my GPA is so-and-so, my TOEFL score is so-and-so. Yeah. I didn't have BDS in such a school. And yeah. um, so while we, while we would love to get your opinion on why it's important to speak about your personal background rather than professional like, mm -hmm. qualifications, we would also love to learn a little bit about what your professional qualifications are. Sure. Um, so I'm, I'm a fresh graduate, as Nora mentioned. Um, so as soon as I graduated from uh, dental school in India, I moved right back to the United States and I started working on, you know, passing the, the much dreaded um, <laughs> board exams. <laughs> so, um, you know, after I cleared that, I started applying right away in, um, I think, April of 2018. So that was my first cycle. And um, while I was applying, you know, I was still looking for opportunities to um, brought in my, uh, you know, exposure to dentistry in the U.S. so I can accustom myself to how, you know, dental offices and profession works here. So I volunteered as a dental assistant at a community clinic, and I was also a research volunteer at the University of Illinois, Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and I also got the opportunity to work as a dental assistant at a private clinic. So, and these were all the experiences which I was able to show to Colorado, um, especially since um, their uh, application starts a little later on in the year. I was able to gain a little more experience by then um, 
can showcase all this. Um, let's see. And yeah, is there anything else you'd like me to mention? Uh, no, I think I think that's good. We okay. should have mentioned at the very beginning that you're part of Serious School of Dental Medicine and you're, you're a current student in that IAPP program, uh, mm -hmm. which is awesome, <laughs> given the competition. <laughs> um yeah probably another another question just for fun is mm -hmm. which migration was difficult was it from the u.s to do a bds in india or was it from india to do a, a, a dds in the u.s i would say both of them were really difficult <laughs> <laughs> because well going um going from the u.s to india i had to um you know it was a really big transition to make um both culturally uh, because everything was so different, like from starting from the clothing, you know, I was never used to wearing Indian clothes and it was so <laughs> uncomfortable to wear. <laughs> um, and I went to a school like which is situated in a more conservative area. Mm -hmm. um, so the faculty, like first they, you know, there's, there, it's a really formal way of greeting faculty there, which is um, so different from the U.S. Mm -hmm. So I remember when I came up to a teacher and I was like, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and, you know, my friends were like, what are you doing? You're supposed to say good morning, sir, ma'am, which I was not used to. And, um, you know, even the exam pattern is different. It's like the final exam is three hours of just plain writing. And I was only used to taking, you know, multiple choice um, exams. So the first three months, you know, um, I had to kind of work through that. But I kept telling myself, you know, I came here for a reason and I just have to have a positive outlook on things. And I think that's what really helped me get through the five years. And I, I had a great set of friends who are so supportive and all my classmates were really sweet too. Mm -hmm. So that definitely made everything easier. Um, and after the five years, like I grew so close to my family and everyone there. So the transition back to the U.S. was just as difficult. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a really unique experience and I learned a lot from it, so. Awesome, I think one of the things that we can readily take away from what Dr. Lila was mentioning is uh, how politely she mentioned what, are the, what were the drawbacks she saw in dental school and the way dentistry was practiced in India uh, without actually letting down her school's reputation or, or what made her go all the way to do a BDS. Uh, this is, theme which people struggle with when they answer like supplemental questions for example what what are the weaknesses of your past time like school or what are the strengths or tell us about the contrast between your home country dental experience and the u.s experience i, I guess a, a many of these questions just listening to Leela's answers uh, i get the sense that yes the, you could you could project yourself with some optimism and some joy of seeing extremes in dentistry without actually, uh, you know, blaming or s stating that your home country experience wasn't as good as it is in the U.S. Uh, I, I know Noura is like waiting to ask some questions, so <laughs> I'll let her <laughs> jump in and I'll quickly jump out for a second. Yeah, Leah. So uh, I was listening to you talk about what you did after you came to the U.S. And uh, mm -hmm. something that interested me was how you got yourself a research volunteer position at U.S. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have a lot of students ask us, how can I improve my, you know, research experience? I'm a fresh grad. I don't have any papers published. And I think what you did was a great way to mm -hmm. expose yourself to research experience. So why don't you tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. how you got yourself that opportunity and what you learned from that? For sure. Um, so I got the opportunity by um, the dental assistant um, volunteering I used to do at a community clinic. Mm -hmm. So um, there used to be um, dental students who'd come, come from the University of Illinois mm -hmm. to volunteer at the, at the place. Mm -hmm. And I got in touch with the student and she actually hooked me up with a faculty member who's um, responsible for placing the students there. And um, that's kind of how I got the contact of a student who was already working there as research assistant. And um, I emailed like one of the faculty members and they were in need for a volunteer. So um, yeah, that's how I, was, how I was able to get in. But I'd like to tell people that there are so many different ways to you know, find research opportunities. You can just like go on the school website 
and you can start reaching out to the different faculty members and you know tell them why you're interested in their program like make sure it's something that is important to you and not just because you want to get into a dental school you right. know um like mention in their email why like their research topic interests them and you know what you could contribute to um you know their research so i think that would help Right, that's awesome. Like, what I got from that is that you're a go-getter. <laughs> uh -huh. It's so important to network, and I and I try to reinstate that whenever I speak to someone. How you can, yeah, it is. You know, how you build from one person to another, and then you emailed and got yourself that opportunity, and that's how it works. Uh -huh. And you know, getting putting yourself out there and trying to look for some opportunity, and of course. Taking sure. something that really interests you and not for the, <laughs> not for just <laughs> getting something. Yeah, that's very important. Yeah. I guess another one mm -hmm. is uh, there is some negativity that exists against people who may uh -huh. have advantage in terms of having an American accent or having family here. Uh -huh. But your story yeah. clearly states that uh, it's just as difficult. Like, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. if if I yeah. if somebody knew American English as well as the new Telugu, they have the same opportunities and access in the US, right? <laughs> uh, so yeah. I guess it, maybe something that we should shed is this idea that people with, you know, who have been in the US have this advantage and that makes the rest of us uh -huh. uh, not as competent. I think it's, if we are a go-getter, that's exactly what's gonna open our doors. Mm -hmm. It's not- Exactly. It's, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not what we were born into. Uh, yeah. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what you said is um is right, and I I do have to admit that you know having a green card does have an advantage, but it's certainly not the only point that schools are looking at um to give you admission. Uh, you know the main thing that they they are looking for in the candidate is you know whether you are actually interested in the profession. Um, you know whether you it's a really um you know competitive process, and even after you get into school, it's a very rigorous course. Mm -hmm. So they, they just want to make sure that you can, um, you know, succeed in their course and even after graduating that you can, you know, be a successful dentist. So Awesome. So maybe mm -hmm. in that 25 minute interview with CEO uh -huh. or in, in like even combined other interviews, how do you think you managed to convince them that you had it in you to succeed in the competition within school and after? Um, well, I think it's, I, I think it's their questions which um, helped me like showcase myself and a lot of prep work too. Um, my brother helped me, you know, prepare for the interviews and, you know, the, I, I put in hours of work because I myself, like I'm introverted, so I'm not too good at speaking to new people. Uh, but I, I think it all just comes with practice though and anyone can, you know, succeed and do really well with practice. Um, one of the questions they asked me was, um, how do I deal with stress? And uh, they kind of tied it back to my experience in India and how I managed like the stressful situation of making the transition. Um, and, you know, I told them the same thing that I, I told you guys, you know, I just try to have a positive outlook on things. And, you know, when things get tough and when I feel that there's a lot like to do in my hands that I, I try to organize myself as much as possible and stay on top of things. So um, I guess they like that answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just, I'm sure yeah. they did. <laughs> you're in C, so I'm sure they did. <laughs> yeah. I ask you uh, about mm -hmm. I mean, the question you're saying, you have very low clinical experience. You don't have a master's uh -huh. program. Um, you have not, you don't have a lot of work experience per se. So why should we choose you? Did that, did that kind of be an impediment? Um, they did not ask me that directly, but they did, um, you know, try to discuss what my experience is as a, was as a dental assistant here at a private um, clinic. Mm -hmm. So I, I think they tried to gauge my dental knowledge in that way. But I, I can tell that, you know, they're not, there's 40 seats in Colorado and um, not everybody has the same kind of clinical experience. Like some have years of experience and somebody like me, like we, I don't have much. So I think, I think um, you know, having years of clinical experience is not something that every college is looking for in every single candidate. Mm 
few weeks. So I think you brought out a very important point when she mm-hmm. said that she was questioned about her US assisting experience, which they tried, they're just trying to find out if you know something about how dentistry exactly. works in the US. Yeah. Some basic uh-huh. knowledge about it. So for people who are fresh grads, it's very important for you to build your profile by coming to the US and doing some kind of shadowing or, you know, assisting to just put yeah. it in your profile that that's also, you know, them experience. Awesome. Yeah. The kind of summarizing, yeah. it's the quality of the knowledge you can demonstrate. It's not the quantity of the uh-huh. experience you've accumulated. That's what's going to get you into school. Yes. So focus on that. Uh, pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> was was CU like a, a you know did you choose CU or did it happen <laughs> and uh-huh. if you did why did well, you well I applied to every single school that I possibly could <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> and CU was CU was the first interview invite that I got mm-hmm. so I guess it's okay for me to say that CU chose me <laughs> <laughs> all right that, that's okay <laughs> um yeah, but while I was waiting for the um, result um, from CU, I did apply for the second cycle. Mm-hmm. And um, I got an interview for Indiana, and I did attend Indiana's interview and the bench exam also. Mm-hmm. Um, so would you guys like me to talk about that? Uh, no. no. But I think yeah. I'm more okay. interested mm-hmm. to know what it is mm-hmm. to be like the youngest student in your classroom, where mm-hmm. you have like students... Mm-hmm. Some people who have like years and you know decades of experience in dentistry. How does it feel yes. in the classroom mm-hmm. among those people? For sure, yeah. I think I think I'm really blessed to have um, you know students with such great diverse clinical backgrounds because um, during lectures, like some of the questions that they ask are you know they're so complex and they're questions that I would never think of because, you know, I just didn't have that kind of clinical experience. So I think, you know, I learned something from them every single day and I get so much help from them, you know, during the labs and when we're, you know, learning how to treatment plan um, for a patient. So it's definitely interesting. Um, At first I was overwhelmed because, you know, there, there are um, students in my, you know, group of classmates who could easily be my professors. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's good. But they're super supportive. So, yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us, like, <laughs> maybe three things about CU that uh-huh. people cannot find on their homepage? <laughs> Applicants <laughs> are all over the place searching for something about CU that they can connect with. And that's. That's true. Yeah, that's not like very standard in their answers so is that something that you mm-hmm. figure out later or before that you can share with the students um well while i was doing my research um to prepare for the interview like i i talked to someone who was already a student here and she told me that the faculty are one of the nicest she has ever met um and that is so true like they will go to any extent to help their students out and they work overtime. I'm pretty sure they put in double the amount of work that we do to, you know, give us the best education possible. And I think that's one thing that candidates should really look forward to when applying to CU. Um, And let's see, one thing I really like uh, is that their labs are open 24 seven. I'm not sure if it's the same with other other schools, but that's one thing I find is a huge advantage because you know it really helps you to um you know spend that extra time if you need with your hand skills in in the sim lab um or in the tech lab to just catch up on your work so that's one thing and let's see i can't think of anything else off the top of my head (laughs) right now but i'm gonna ask nora based on your recollection Uh of your research was there anything that stood out for you about uh, CU? I do way too much research on <laughs> things. <laughs> but Leela's right. Uh, some of the things that I heard about CU when I was doing my research is that, you know, faculty are just the nicest people. And mm-hmm. like, oh yeah, I can think of something. I don't know if that's true. Uh, uh-huh. That, you know, you get to type it on teeth for free. How many, how yeah, many you free. do. You know, you, you can get how many you want. And that kind of like... That's true. It removes the hindrance to practice. Like... You know, if mm-hmm. you know that it's going to be like $2 a teeth, I'm going to like think 
should I buy it or like how mm-hmm. many should I buy per month? But if you don't, yeah. um, it improves how much you can practice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you don't have to worry about like any of the materials and um, there, there's no limit on how much you could use. So, so that was something it's a great point to bring up. It's not like the back end of the bench bench course. I have something that I wanted to ask Leela, at least for like uh-huh. fresh grads out there, you know. I mean, as a fresh grad myself, I, during the journey, came across a lot of people who discouraged me. It discouraged mm-hmm. me and they told me that, you you know, you won't be able to make it because you're a fresh grad and you're competing with all of these people who are yeah. PhDs and masters. Have you, un- yeah. you, know, you encountered something like that and how did you... Um, for sure out of it yeah uh-huh i definitely was told the same thing by so many people and i just want to say you know don't listen to any of that <laughs> um because there there are many schools as i said who are looking for fresh graduates and just because you don't have clinical experience back in india or here doesn't mean that you know you have no chance so i think doing those you know things like being a dental assistant, getting hands-on work somehow is definitely going to help. And I think it's also about how you present yourself in your resume and in your um, personal statement. So you can like present yourself really well with the, with the um, small amount of experience that you do have. So it's really important. And these guys, I'm sure, will help you with that. <laughs> yeah, <good>. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for inviting us. <laughs> Uh, that, that's awesome. Uh, can you like, like maybe draw an image for us on just the, the screen right now that kind of uh-huh. um, takes you takes a student through the steps they need to prepare for CEO's application, interview, mm-hmm. and bench. So like maybe if you can put like a couple of steps and say, do these 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 things to nail CEO. What would they be? Sure. Okay. So. Um, do you want to give me like a white white screen so I can yeah. write on it? Awesome. Here we go. All right. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So I would say, see you. Okay. So I would say um, for the application, like the main thing I noticed that they look at is the um, personal can, statement. Turn off your video during this. Oh, can you still see my video? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. How do I do that? Uh, it's fine. Keep going, no problem. Yeah, that's all right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep going, yeah. Okay, so one thing is to concentrate on the personal statement. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, And then they do have supplemental questions. And there's a word limit on this. Um, So make sure that when you're answering these supplemental questions, uh, you really like focus in on one, one thing instead of, you know, branching off into so many different topics. Uh, Let's see. And then, so the bench exam obviously is a really big part of the interview. And I would say this is a very important aspect because there are so many applicants and, you know, one way they can differentiate like one candidate from another uh, when they're trying to select the um, candidates is by your bench exam. So prepare as much as you can for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I prepped for it by, by taking a bench exam prep course by Dr. Stevenson, um, and that really helped me out so much. 
Uh, so I would recommend. I'm sorry. Did you also prep teeth at home after? Yes. Yes, I did. Um, so I used to, you know, prep every single day as I would be like um, doing on the bench exam, the real bench exam. Mm -hmm. So that is like one class two cavity, one, um, you know, uh, prep like a PFM or a full gold, gold crown prep and a one, um, you know, wax preparation. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to time yourself too. Uh, so, okay, maybe I should write that down. Um, so, take a prep course or know the criteria, I would say. Know the, and they follow the ADEX criteria. So you can look this up online and then um, you can find out exactly what they're looking for in their bench exam, bench, um, you know, preparations. They're also going to give you a manual. So it really helps to read that over and over again to familiarize yourself to, um, you know, know exactly what they're expecting. And so that, you know, you're, you're more confident when you go into the actual bench exam. Um, second thing, practice as much as you can. Um, and then on the day of, of the bench exam, I wanna stress like how important it is to keep yourself calm. I know it's really hard to do that, but you know, the more calm you are, I think the, the better your preps turn out, um, which is what I kept telling myself. And I think it kind of did work. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, just keep practicing. And I think, um, you know, that the it's going to help you stay more calm. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. The third thing is to prep for the interview. And one source which I used while I was prepping for the interview is um, the website called Student Doctor Network. And, and um, they have questions, um, you know, which students um, post of like the questions they were asked and there are some responses there too. So, you know, if you could go, if you could go over that and um, practice like, you know, with your family members or get help, um, that would really help. And um, yeah, I, I think that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Anything else like that you guys would like to add? Do you know like a number of mock interviews, the number of teeth you were Huh? Uh, prep uh, or performed at, in practice to both of these? In practice, I think, um, let's see. I prepped around maybe like 50 or 60 teeth. Mm -hmm. But that's because I, I had two months to um, practice for the bench exam. So I think that's what allowed me to prep. And, you know, one important thing I, I would like to say is it's not the number of preps that you um, do. It's like what you learn from each of your preps. So if you do one prep and you spend like a good two hours or even the whole day just trying to analyze what your mistakes are and how you can correct them for the next prep, that really helps instead of just repetitive, repetitively doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. So yeah, another thing is like what you mentioned with mm -hmm. uh, time management. Mm -hmm. To use bench as you yes. know, you've told over and over again to these people is that it's you you are running to you know you're chasing time and you're like there's That's so much true. to do so as That's she true. said you have to time yourself when you're practicing yep. all of these things for sure mm -hmm. Leela, this time i think it's going to be different because they've said it's a mm -hmm. work bench and i know that you know they haven't come up, yeah. come up with anything yet but do you have any mm -hmm. ideas of what they can expect I think it might be like OSCEs. That's what I told them. Like, what what kind of ideas? Yeah, that's what I think too. And based on what what I heard, they did say it's a virtual exam. And um, somebody told me that they're trying to um, develop a software too. I'm not sure how true that is. Mm -hmm. But I think the way that way um, people can prep is by just um, familiarizing like themselves with the dimensions which are needed. Mm -hmm. So, like, for a full gold crown, you know, 1.5 occlusal reduction and so on. And um, trying to, like, 
train their eye into looking for those um, dimensions and you know being able to point out any mistakes if there are any I think that would help Perfect. This is by far the most concrete answer we have got. And so, <laughs> yeah, I get like rumors all the time. Like, yeah, see who's coming up with this, this is coming with that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're all rumors, right? We don't know if they're true yeah. or not. So. Maybe a last uh, curveball question. <laughs> uh -huh. If there was one thing that you wished uh -huh. earlier in this process, what would that have been? Mm -hmm. Um, I wish I knew how important um, it is to get the dental experience here in the U.S. Um, by being a dental assistant or, you know, by any other means, because I think I kind of started that a little late. So if I if I had a head start, may, maybe I would have been at more of an advantage. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, so to close the session, I want to ask you, what does uh -huh. a typical day look like for you at CU? Can you sure. do it? Okay, um, so my first term well, um, consisted mostly of lectures. Mm -hmm. So we had, we had um, two hours of lecture in the morning and then um, we had lab up until lunch. After that, um, you know, depending on the day, we had um, either more lab for, for the rest of the day, which is um, another four hours after lunch, or it was lectures, but um, you know, every week we have tests and quizzes, so um, it's it's really important to study for those, and I think most of my time goes by, you know, studying for that. Sounds fun. <laughs> <But it's>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And even the lab work that they assign, like, um, some people can finish it during the time allotted for it, but I'm someone who likes to take my time, so I end up, you know, staying after school and finishing that up. So right now it's mostly like preclinicals and lecture, but I'm sure as we get into clinics, that's going to change. Nice. Just, mm -hmm. uh, just, I know that I said that was the last question, but I just kind of that's remembered okay. <laughs> something that people have been asking me. I mean, they're yeah. all like kind of confused about what a student panel discussion is in CU. So okay. can you give us an idea about what that is? Sure. Um, so are you talking about the interview or... No, the student panel but discussion where you get you into a room and like you have all these uh, ISP2 and ISP1 students and you get to have a discussion with them. Um, I mean, I don't remember having that. So Remember like they take one batch of interviewees into like a conference room and we sit with uh, ISP2 students. Oh, during, so okay, yeah. during the interview. Yes. Yeah. So that that's, that's mostly a question and answer session. Um, and it's really to help us know more about the school and what to expect once you're a student there. Um, so it's just uh, a few of the ISP2s or like the seniors volunteer to talk to the ISP1s and they basically answer whatever questions we have. So we can ask them like, you know, how to manage your time when, when we're in school or, you know, what's the patient, what does the patient pool look like? And, you know, any other questions you have. I think the question which we're not asking is, are you being judged in that student panel discussion? People ask like, is no. it time to ask impressive questions? No, not at all, because there's no faculty and they tell you right away that you know, you, you're not gonna be judged. So <laughs> you can ask them whatever question you like, being judgment free. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Mila. Uh, it's been a yeah. pleasure speaking to you. I mean, there were so many nuggets of useful information in, in what you said. Mm -hmm. I would like think people must like listen to this a couple of more times to pick out. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, no and, problem. And by far, it was I think our most casual conversation with a guest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if you could awesome. just hang on. Yeah.